And later still, we return to the land of Paulson Hayes so that we can rewind a bit. Before all that paint got slopped on your hive and before that mysterious hole was made. Man, how'd that hole get made? It was when Carcat ran TA's Curse of Till Death program and his computer blew up. That's what happened. We'll see this happen later. It will be startling and unexpected. Carcat, deal with crabby customer. You go downstairs to confront your custodian, which is another term for a frightening beast known as Lucis Naturae. Your Lucis has looked after you since you were very young in lieu of any biological parents whom you have never known. No young troll ever knows his or her blood parents, nor could such lineage ever be accurately traced. Adult trolls supply their genetic material to the filial tales carried by Imperial drones and offer to the monstrous mother grub deep underground in the brooding caverns. She then combines all the genetic material into one diabolical incestuous slurry and lays hundreds of thousands of eggs at once. The eggs hatch into young larval trolls which wriggle about to locate a cozy stalactite from which to spin their cocoons. After they pupate, the young troll with his or her newfound limbs undergoes a series of dangerous trials. If they survive, they are chosen by a member of the diverse and terrifying subterranean monster population native to Alternia. This creature becomes the troll's Lucis, and together they surface and choose a location to build a hive. The building process is facilitated by carpenter droids left on the planet to cater to the young. But only for building. They're on their own otherwise. The vast majority of adult trolls are off-planet, serving some role in the forces of ongoing Imperial conquest, besieging other star systems in the name of Alternian glory. The culture and civilization on the homeworld is maintained almost entirely by the young. Trolls sure are weird. You leap into the domestic fray in an attempt to mollify your nannying aggressor. After a lot of kicking and fussing and gnashing of teeth and carapace, you just pull out a few chilled row cubes from the fridge to settle the beast down. Trolls and their custodians have a peculiar arrangement of codependence. The Lucis behaves as a lifelong bodyguard, caretaker, and visceral sort of mentor, while the young troll must learn to function as a sort of zookeeper. We decide to agree this conflict is not a big enough deal to warrant a detailed examination of the action, or an embedded musical accompaniment. We also agree that while it would have been pretty sweet, we are also in kind of a hurry here. But if it were to be accompanied by something audible, it would probably sound something like this. We decide to listen to that track, close our eyes, and imagine what might have been. Wow, that sure was awesome. Anyway, moving on. In fact, we are in such a hurry you could almost say we need to get moving. On the double. Yeah. There's this pretty cool dude, okay? Some people seem to think he's cool. Sometimes. He guesses they're right. I mean, maybe. If they say so. Actually, you know what? They're right. This guy's dynamite late in a box of hot shit. Screw the haters. Anyway, he's standing around being all chill like cool dudes are known to do sometimes when they're not moping around or nursing migraines or whatever. A cool dude like this probably has a real cool name. Or at least a name that doesn't completely fucking suck. Like at least not the kind of name that belongs to someone you'd want to just perpetually wail on. Maybe just a name that makes you cringe a little, but you guess you can deal with it if you've got to. It's just a guy's name, it's not like it really matters. Who cares? But he probably wouldn't tell you what it was if you asked. He'd be way too moody for that. In fact, this guy probably thinks you've got some attitude and probably doesn't want a damn thing to do with you. You could always try to guess his name, but instead of that, here's a better idea. Why don't you just fuck off and go to hell? Yeah, name this kooky broad instead. Okay, what's her name? Wait. You gotta be kidding me. Looks like we're going back to the other guy again. Alright, hang on. It appears this cool and moody dude had a change of heart. He feels pretty bad about flying off the handle like that, as if shit wanted nothing to do with the handle. Shit would like to reconcile with the handle and perhaps seek marital counseling. So what's his name gonna be? Enter name. Your name is Salux Captor. You are apeshit bananas at computers, and you know all the codes. All of them. You are the unchallenged authority on apiculture networking. And though all your friends recognize your unparalleled achievements as a totally sick hacker, you feel like you could be better. It's one of a number of things you sort of beat yourself up about for no very good reason during sporadic and debilitating bipolar mood swings. You have a penchant for bifurcation in logic and in life. 
Your mutant mind is hounded by the psychic screams of the imminently deceased. Your visions foretell of the planet's looming annihilation, and yet unlike the typical sightless prophet of doom, you are gifted with vision too full. For now. You have developed a new game, adapted via code parsed from the runes and glyphs in an ancient underground temple. You believe this game to be the salvation of your race, though you are not sure how yet. To ensure success, you will distribute the game to two teams of friends, a red team and a blue team. You will lead the latter group. Your troll tag is Twin Armageddon's and you tend to speak with a bit of a lisp. What will you do? Solix, equip throwing stars to strife specimens. Why would you do that? A high-level psionic has no use for any particular specibus allocation. Solix, fling star specibus word. You make short work of the specibus and... Oh god, one of your bee house mainframes. The silicone was sliced clean through by your foolish maneuver. What were you thinking? The workers pair up and dance angry messages to you in binary code. Solix, taste honey. No! You do not, under any circumstances, eat the mind honey. The consequences are highly unpleasant. You cultivate this honey for your Lucis. It helps him not be such a complete idiot all the time. Nearly most of the time, instead. Solix, calm those bees down. <laughs> Nap time. Solix, to work a computer. You are always up to your nook in the newest and hottest games. It is hard to walk around the place without squishing them. Whenever that happens, you are screwed and you have to grow a new one from scratch. Or just pirate it, you guess. But tonight is no night for games. Well, okay it is. But just one game in particular, and this game is no joking matter. It is delirious bug nasty. Solix, recruit team leader. TC, you wanna be the leader of one of the teams? You mean your game to save the world? Yeah. Okay, I pick the red team. Okay, I didn't say anything about a red team, or even that there were two teams, but... fine. Obviously you are going to set up red and blue teams, come on. You don't know what I'm going to do. Stop being as though you can read my mind. It's not a power you have, your strengths are being blind and tricking people about stuff. And I guess being generally savvy and pretty decent at other stuff, but that's why I'm picking you and not some other fucking schlub from Retardation Row. Solix, please. You are Mr. Appleberry Blast, and everyone knows those are your favorite flavors. Even though you type it a yucky mustard, which is weird. Well, maybe there's more to me than you think. Maybe I'm not the two trick hoof beasts you want to make me out as. Maybe I just want to give the red and blue thing a rest for a change and not make it so it's like, Oh look, it's that predictable fuck with those two stupid colors. It's amazing how much everyone fucking hates them. Maybe red and blue aren't that great and I hate them suddenly, have you thought of that? Maybe I'm more of an Aubergine guy plus whatever that putrid color it is you type with. So what is that, turquoise? Maybe it's making me turquoisey. Maybe the new name for that color is Summer Shithead Mist, have you considered that? But I'm sticking with red and blue, so maybe you should suck on it. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe is a stupid word. Maybe that's the big maybe we should all ponder tonight over some hot shut the hell up tea. So, you think I'm savvy? Yeah, I think so. Pick out whoever you want for the red team and I'll lead the blue team. I'll send you the download soon. Talk to you later. Wait, maybe you should tell me more about the game first. How exactly are we saving the world? I don't know yet. I just know what I've seen on my visions. That the world will end and our whole race dies and this is how we save it. And AA can back me up on this, so don't be all doubting me about it. I am not doubting you. I think you are right. Mostly. Mostly? What does that mean? Well, when you talk about how you're going to die too... I am going to die. I mean, we all are, but especially me. I'm gonna get my ass served to me twofold. Double the service, like two dudes on double Butler Island, getting worked over by a Siamese twin masseuse. But before I die, I'm gonna go blind like you. It has to happen like that. I'm not sure why, but I think it's like fulfilling some requirement for a true prophet of doom. In order for the visions to be right, that has to happen, and the universe will make sure it will. It's kind of like how a prophet earns his stripes, by being blind, like how an angel earns its wings. What's an angel? Some terrible mythical demon, with these awful feathery wings. Yikes. 
Paradox Space uses them to usher in the end. How does it know what angel to use? Huh? So, yeah. We will all die, but most especially me, end of story. But, don't take this the wrong way. But how can you be totally sure about all that? How do you know some of the real visions you're having aren't getting kind of tangled up with, uh... Sort of the way you are about yourself. What do you mean? How you get mopey and you're always the victim of something and how sometimes you think you suck when you really don't. Maybe that is clouding your vision? Okay, that's just some personal private emotional issues and I'm dealing with that. And honestly, I'd appreciate you not always throwing that in my face every goddamn opportunity you get. Like this is a big circus act to you and that's your special clown pie. See? God. So sensitive. Seriously, talk to AA. She will corroborate everything. You and she are pretty tight, aren't you? Not really anymore. She used to be a lot of fun, but now talking to her... I don't know. It just somehow makes me sad. Okay, well, tonight's not about fun. This is serious. Deliriously so. We are in Smyria's shit-stained city. Screw you and your shit stains. I will have a fucking blast and you can't stop me. Team Blue Thumb. <laughs> oh shit, it's on, sucker. That... Okay, that was completely meaningless. What was the point? Whoever you are. Solix, deal with Apocalypse Arisen. Did you set up the teams? Still working on it, but yeah, more or less. We should all be playing soon. And I guess leaving this dimension. That is what happens, right? Yes. So I guess you should be pretty happy when we finally get out of here? I don't know about that. Oh. Will you at least be able to leave the voices behind? I don't know about that either. Isn't that kind of depressing? The thought that they might stay with you until you die? Not really. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with a lot of things. Even our inevitable failure, though it will briefly masquerade as victory. Wow, fuck! That was so much more depressing than the thing I just said. Teresi was right, you are such a drag to talk to these days. She was right about a lot of things. Wow, what a mysterious thing to say. I'm so intrigued. Do me a favor and spare me your spooky conundrums tonight. You're kind of pissing me off. But you like to talk to me. This is a fact, not a question. They told me. Oh, your sources have spoken. Relay a message for me. Tell them to go haunt my huge creaking bone bulge. Why do you like to talk to me? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because we're supposed to save the world together? I also talk to you because, you know, in case you haven't noticed, I despise myself and perpetually seek to duplicate through emotional pain the cacophony of physical pain my hideous mutant brain causes me every day. Oh my god, I just had a breakthrough! Thank you so much for this, it was great! That was a joke. Here, type, ha. Huh. Now type it again. Huh. There you go, you're now officially the life of the party. <laughs> I just took an embarrassing video of you cutting loose there. Boy, I sure hope this juicy nugget doesn't wind up on the internet. Solux, I actually would like it if you were happy. Okay. Thank you for saying so. You seem sad and angry all the time. What does anger feel like? I forgot. Have you ever been angry? I don't remember you getting angry about anything. Maybe I never was. I feel like I was, though. Once. Why don't you ask Carcat? He's way angrier than me. And for that matter, why don't you get on his case about it instead of mine? I think his anger serves a greater purpose. It's part of his destiny and thus ours. It will help him to sabotage his own designs, which are very much in opposition to the broader purpose, and will sow the seeds of our failure, a failure which will ironically prove to be mission critical. If you think we're gonna fail, why wouldn't you get mad about that? At the voices sending you down this blind alley the whole time. They never lied, though. This is how it had to be. I have to be totally honest, though at no point did I ever lie. But their omission, this game will not save the world. The fuck?! And though it is still very important, even in our defeat, 
Unfortunately, it is much closer to serving as the instrument of our people's demise than that of their salvation, and we twelve will behave simultaneously as the pawns and the orchestrators of the great undoing. I don't want to play anymore, then. You will, though. Fuck that! Just watch. This shit is dusted. Check me out, all dusting it like a saucy fucking maid. It cannot be stopped. Meteors are en route. You know this, Solux. Who cares? I'm yanking the grub tube on this silver punctured bitch. I'm telling Red Team Leader to forget the whole thing. I'm quitting as Blue Team Leader. If you want to shamble through this macabre fantasy of yours solo, be my guest. You were never going to be the team leader, though. Which is to say, the first to enter. Are you messing with me? You do realize I'm psychic, too. I could pull so much trippy shit out of my spinal crevice it would make your head spin like dervish in a fucking blender. So get off your high hoof beast. I'm coming up. Huh? Up where? Hello? Solux, abort. Hey, change of plan. We aren't playing this game anymore. You don't have to bother recruiting. Sorry to waste your time. I'm not the leader anymore. Carcat is. He is? He threw a tantrum about it, so I let him be the red leader. Okay, that was fairly predictable, but that's fine. I'll talk to him about it. What's going on? Nothing. This game sucks, and AA's full of crap. Sorry about all this. Hey, change of plan. We aren't playing this game anymore. Hey! Guess who the Red Leader is? I'm the leader. It's me. Your plan to cripple your rival team has failed! I know. She told me. I don't care. The game is bad news. It'll cause the end of the world, not stop it. So forget it. Just go back to whatever you were doing. Writing your shitty code or whatever. <laughs> so pathetic! This is yet another feeble attempt to weaken your opposition. Terezi and I have already established a connection, and we are making great progress here. We are a great team, and I am a fantastic leader. We will beat this game in no time, while your team is clearly still asleep at the thorax. Ah, God, no, you idiot. I don't care about the game anymore. I just quit. I'm not playing. You should too. <laughs> Amazing. You're either being really persistent with this transparent ruse, or you really are just that sad and incompetent. Neither case deserves my respect or my friendship. In fact, you know what? Friendship cancelled. There, it's official. Bye-bye, friendship. Oh, like you haven't said that like a billion times. You aren't in any position to question my competence. You're the worst programmer I've ever seen. You don't know anything about computers. Why do you bother? The only thing you're good at is yelling and making huge mistakes and being ugly and horrible in every way and having stupid little nubby horns! To be honest, I don't even see what's so great about your programming or hacking. What is a hacker even? Just some smug asshole in movies doing fake things and making up words. It's not even a real thing to be. It's just some bullshit title you gave yourself so you can feel a tiny bit less loathsome. Oh no, more childish burns. I don't have to prove anything to you. I'm a great hacker. Period. No. It's all so clear now. You were a fraud all along. What does all this nonsensical code you wrote even do? It's all nonsense. Like a bluff. You just say, oh, Karkat will never understand what I wrote is bullshit because he's too dumb to figure it out. Well, you're busted. These viruses here, I bet, do nothing at all. Wait, KK. I bet if I ran them, nothing bad would happen. Might even improve my computer's performance. No, don't. How about this idiotic program with the red and blue code? Which is a meaningless thing to do with code anyway. What does that even mean? It's another one of your scams. Why not sneak some bad clip art into the files too and pretend that's code? Oh god, no. Don't run that. I'm serious. What would happen? I'm not sure, but it would be really, really bad if you ran it. Just don't. Uh-huh. Just as I thought. You can't even come up with a good lie when I press you on it. Your bluff has been called compiling as we speak. It will auto-run when it finishes. And now I have to go attend to something outside because Terezi is doing something just unspeakably stupid right now. Whoops, forget I said that. It was privileged information. You are the dumbest grub fucker on the planet, I swear. Later, douchebag. KK, do not run that code! Hello? Oh my god.
You are highly startled by the totally unexpected explosion. Karkad and his friends and everyone they would ever meet thereafter would experience great misfortune on account of the curse unwittingly implemented through Solix's esoteric Mobius double reach around virus. And the Charles Lucis would soon die. Although one of the Colonel Sprites would be prototyped with a dead Lucis, each prior to entering the medium. Upon entry, they would each have a bittersweet reunion with the creature after the Colonel hatched, triggering the Sprite's metamorphosis. For the first time, the Trolls would be able to have verbal conversations with their custodians, and would be guided by them along their journeys. Unfortunately, the underlings and warring royalty would gain the benefits of the monstrous prototypings as well. Each sprite, except for one, would only be prototyped once. The players would learn quickly that while one pre-entry prototyping per player was absolutely necessary for ultimate success, additional pre-entry prototypings merely empowered their enemies unnecessarily. The game has no explicit rule that demands something dead for prototyping, but in practice, the Colonel Sprite has particular attraction to the deceased or the doomed. Across every session ever played, exceptions to this pattern are extremely rare. Solix, lament. Why did you send Karkat that code? It was such a bad idea. You suppose it was a boastful gesture to get a friend to think more highly of you. But why would flaunting your superior skills accomplish this? It was foolish. You ought to wipe all these clever viruses you wrote off your computer. They can only bring more trouble. Solix, delete. While deleting your virus folders, you pause on one oddball file you have lying around. You did not write this virus. You copied it from an obscure server far beyond your planet's global network. This application is running on that server perpetually. It is an extremely simple till death program. Its main loop is tied to the lifespan of the universe. When the universe dies, a mysterious subprogram will be executed. You have no way of knowing what that subprogram does. It runs on a protected part of the server. It is completely unhackable. You delete the file, but it won't do much good. The program is already running elsewhere. Luckily, whatever harm it will do will not be done for many billions of years. And even then, what harm could a virus do after the expiration of the universe? This file always struck you as quite odd. But Solix, even with his vision twofold, does not have the perceptional luxuries of our vision omnipresent. When executed, the subprogram will summon an indestructible demon into the recently voided universe. This monstrous being with the power to travel through time is inconvenienced very little by his arrival upon the Great Undoing. He has the entire cadaver of the expired universe to pick apart at his whim from its birth through its swelling maturity and tapering decay. In a reality he is known to have marked for predation, he will go about assembling followers through various epochs, even going as far as personally establishing the parameters for his future summoning. Solix couldn't know that the virus is essentially a formality. <laughs> the demon is already here. Sounds like your Lucis is agitated about something up there. You already gave him his serving of honey today. If he thinks he can get more, well that's just greedy. You wonder what could be bothering him? You keep your enormous bicyclops chained to the roof of your communal hive stem. It is the only place there is room for him. Dueling with him on the roof during feeding time is a daily ordeal. Be the other girl. You are now one of the five other girls. Stop being the other girl. You are now no longer the other girl, or any of the other five for that matter. What's the name of this dude sitting in his four-wheel device? Enter name. Your name is Tavros Nightram. You are known to be heavily arrested by fairy tales and fantasy stories. You have an acute ability to commune with the many creatures of Alternia, a skill you have utilized to capture and train a great many. They are all your friends, as well as your warriors, which you pit in battle through a variety of related card and role-playing games. You used to engage in various forms of more extreme role-playing with some of your other friends before you had an accident. You like to engage in the noble practice of Alternian slam poetry, 
possibly the oldest, most revered, and certainly freshest art form in your planet's rich history. You have a profound fascination with the concept of flight and all lore surrounding the topic. You believe in fairies, even though they aren't real. Your troll tag is Adios Toriador, and you, uh, speak in a sort of, uh, faltering manner. What will you do? Tavros, cut to the chase and play card games immediately. You kickstart a rousing match of fetus spawn, with the only friend you've got to play with in person, your loyal loses Tinkerbull. You take a look at the favorable hand you dealt yourself and crack a mischievous smile. With a host plush at the ready, you quickly lob a new Gandhi bomb and catch your adversary off guard. Horseroni, I choose you! With a brooding whinny, Horseroni shovels his mighty hooves and makes short work of the finest sucker, boosting his vitals. Horseroni is now primed and raring for battle. Look out, Tinkerbull! You use your awesome bestial communion abilities and bend the ferocious stallion to your whim. Tinkerbull can't stand the suspense! <laughs> Nap time! Everybody wins. Horseroni gains a bunch of levels. In no time, he'll be ready to breed and you can put him out to stud. Good game, everybody. That was a lot of fun. Time to do some other stuff, you guess. Tavros, roll up your ramp. This is how you get up to your recuperer coon when it's time to rest. It's kind of a production getting in and out. Tavros, hop in. You can't fit all the way in because of your huge horns. It makes it hard to get any solid shut eye. Oh great, now you're covered in slime. Why did you do this? You're going to have to change your clothes. There goes another solid hour down the tubes. Ah, oh, damn, and there goes your four-wheel device down the ramp. That happens a lot. After a major cleanup break, roll and a lot of crawling around your respite block, you equip your jousting lance. You like to practice your jousting outside. One day you hope to prove yourself worthy of recruitment into the halls of the dreaded Imperial Cavil Reapers. Assuming you are not slated for calling first on account of your disability. Or really any other arbitrary reason. You wheel over to your favorite poster featuring Pupa Pan, which is your favorite thing. You have always fantasized that one day intrepid young pupa would come and take you away. And together you would fly to a beautiful paradise planet of legend that has all sorts of fanciful stuff like pirates, treasure, a cruel villain with a missing arm and a missing eye, and those weird aliens called Indians. You have left your window open since you were very young, just in case Pupa stopped by one night and decided to splash a pinch of special stardust in your face. You have had this interest far prior to your accident. Being paralyzed isn't what made you want to be able to fly. That would be dumb and would make no sense. Being paralyzed does sort of make you want to be able to walk, though. Way in the future. Over the course of your long journey, at one point you were fitted with a cool pair of robo-legs. The guy who likes to build robots built them for you. But then he does like to break them more than he likes to build them. It's usually why he builds them in the first place. Occasionally, though, he will allow philanthropy to override misanthropy. You were lucky enough to have a friend who didn't mind getting her hands dirty on account of your best interest. A friend with a chainsaw. The guy who likes to build robots just stood there and watched. It would always make everyone uncomfortable whenever he would just stand there and watch. And way back again. But before that, you had to scoot around in your wheel device throughout the various worlds of the medium and endure all sorts of follies related to your disability, which, on account of their great plurality and marginal relevance, we will not get to see. Just as well. Well, look what happens when you space out and contemplate the future like that. The messages start piling up. <laughs> 